Hello, I'm Christina from The Turned Leg. I love to salvage, repurpose, and create and help others to do the same. I also have owned a booth at an antique mall for over six years now. And I actually have quite a bit of square footage. So I've learned a lot. My original career in life was that of a middle school science teacher. So somehow I got the crazy idea to go into an antique booth. And uh, there was a big learning curve. I've created a whole series on how to help you with your antique booth and tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. Today's video, we're talking about reorganization. It's a big deal, right? You want your booth to look pretty, but you want to cram as many things in it to make a profit, am I right? But you don't want it to look junky. It's a constant battle and I don't have all the answers, but I do have some things that work for me that I'm gonna share with you. Most of the time when I overhaul my booth, it is a seasonal overhaul. So right now I'm getting ready to ring in Christmas. But as an antique booth dealer, it's helpful if you're one of the first to bring in the holiday because then you make those sales on the holiday items. So where do I get started? How do I figure out what to do? In my previous videos, I shared one really important tip and that is move things around and it makes it look like a whole new booth. Now that might be a little bit more work on your part, but it does increase sales. So when I'm doing an overhaul, or even if I'm just replacing an item that's sold, I try to move a few other items around to give the space a whole new look. And if you have two booths like I do in the same mall, you can move items between the two booths, make them both look brand new. The very first thing I do is I analyze my space. I'm really visual and if I can walk through the space, great, but then I even like to snap a whole bunch of photos. We're not talking about social media pics, just snap a whole bunch of quick photos for yourself. Don't worry about lining stuff up or lighting. The purpose of these photos is to see and remember what you have. Many times I've just done a booth redesign at home and I thought, oh, well, I'll just bring that in because I have plenty of space. When I get there, I forget I have like four other pieces that I forgot all about in the space that I was considering. It happens, so you need to know what you have. So go to your booth, look around, and snap a whole bunch of photos. The next step that I like to do is grab my photos and a notepad and a pencil. Yes, I'm old school. I make a list of all of the big items in my booth, and I just go photo by photo and list. Table, chair, whatever I have. Once you have that list, I then like to organize it. One really important thing in organizing your booth is color. Color plays an important part and it will really reflect your style and make things more cohesive if you pay attention to it. So the next step in making my list is I sort all of the items on the list in color. Usually this is on a new sheet of paper. If the piece is white, I'll put that in one column. If it's blue, I also put wood items all together too. If the item has more than one color, you decide what's the dominant color or maybe make a section for multicolor. That works too. You also want to think about the style of these items. I often kind of call myself like the split personality person. I really have a passion for two different styles in my booth. I kind of like over the top, fancy, gold, gaudy, feminine, and I also like rustic and chippy and rusted and junky kind of looking stuff. And so when I'm putting them into those color categories, I then might need to go through and decide like, 
is the red piece that's really chippy and metal and old looking gonna go with the fancier red piece you have to make these decisions too about style but usually as i'm color grouping i get an idea about what the whole plan is going to look like i start to think about hmm okay so i've got a bed or i've got a table so maybe i should make a bedroom kind of look in this corner or maybe I'm going to kind of make it look like a kitchen here. It's really important, I think, in your booth for your items to tell a story, to make people walk in and feel like there's organization and it's not all just thrown in. Sure, I like to go in antique booths and I've seen this quite often where it does look like you've walked into someone's attic, but they still have paid attention to color and style and organization, even if you don't realize it. If you need more ideas for inspiration of your booth design, and sometimes I make the color list and I'm like, okay, I got nothing. I love Pinterest. Remember, I'm a visual learner. I like to see stuff. If you want to see some of the display ideas that inspire me, you can go to my Pinterest page, The Turned Leg, and see what I'm pinning too. Another thing I'll do when I'm really stuck for ideas is I'll head out to my local antique mall. And by the way, I also have some videos here of antique malls that I have visited. You can click on the link above to see one of them, but there's a whole bunch, or maybe you have an antique mall near you that could provide some inspiration. Even going to a retail location or a mall can help to give you some idea, see what's trending, and fire up those creative juices. Are you enjoying this video? If so, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel. You can also click the bell for notifications every time I upload a new video. All of this really helps me to grow my channel to help others to salvage, repurpose, and create. The next thing I do with my list, hopefully after I have a little inspiration, is I assign symbols to everything. Okay, bear with me. I know this seems like a lot of work, but you want your displays to be top notch and it's really helpful to do a lot of your prep before you get to the antique mall. If you're lucky enough that you're allowed to get in early to design your space before customers come in, that's wonderful. For me, that's not always the case. So I need to be fast because I don't wanna miss out on any sales and be rude to my customers while they're in there with me. I gotta get in and get it done. I assign symbols on my list. Now you can make any symbols you want, but these are the symbols that I just traditionally use and they work well for me. I put a square next to items that are good bases, that are big and sturdy and I can stack items on. I put squares for bases because bases are where you're gonna start with your design. You have to know what you have. For tiny items that can be stacked easily on top of things and underneath, I put triangles next to all of those. I like a good variety. You can only have so many little tiny end tables. Sometimes you can have a barrel, sometimes you can have a crate. All of these things work good on top pieces and below. The next symbol I use are circles. And those are things that are medium in size. They might not be a good base, but they're still pretty large and they have to be accounted for. Sometimes I keep them on the ground, near the base, on an angle, nearby. It just depends on what pieces I have. So those are the pieces that are a little bit more difficult to fit into a design. And as you put all of these symbols down, you might find out that there are items you're missing, like maybe you're missing bases. And so as you go shopping, those are things you wanna look for. Once I have all of my items color organized and labeled with my symbols, then I'm going to get designing. Now, if you want scale drawings, go for it. <laughs> 
I don't have time for that. So I sketch things out pretty quick and I kind of get a rough idea. I will tell you right now that no matter what, no matter how good your drawing is, no matter how good your scale is, it probably won't 100% work when you get to the mall. Maybe you sold something when you get there that you weren't planning on or it was gonna be a really big base for you. So you have to be flexible. And there are some times when I'm designing my booth space that I will have one whole section where I have no clue what's gonna go over there, but I have to kind of see what's left over and what didn't fit where I had planned, and I will just make it work. I always do all of this designing in pencil, and I try to do it a few days before the big plan. I also do something really important, and that is list things in the margins as I go. One of the th columns that I will make is a to bring column because you might be designing and decide that those snowflake lace curtains that you have in your basement are gonna be just perfect in this location. You don't wanna forget them when you get to the booth. So make sure if you're adding things to the mall, you make a to bring list. Another list I make is a take home. Ideally, I'd love to never have to swap out and haul home pieces of furniture but it helps your booth to look fresh and new, to have new pieces. And sometimes things don't fit in the design and that will make your booth look junky and lose sales. So sometimes you gotta haul it home. And if you work the design, maybe it's some of the lighter pieces that you won't mind hauling home as much. Another thing I will put in the column are any notes or repairs or things I need to think about. I also try, not always successful, but I try to plan the move so that I'm not getting the whole booth set up and then having to pull out a piece that's located in the back. If you have a tiny booth, one of my booths is eight by 10. It's pretty small and my pieces are usually pretty large. Planning your order of your move is important. And if you have a super huge booth overhaul, like I'm planning on doing for Christmas, where a whole bunch of my small inventory is gonna come home so I can bring in the holiday smalls, then you might wanna try to plan partial moves of pieces ahead of time. I've started to kind of move a few things around kind of in anticipation for the big move. Having some of the big pieces in place will really help you and save a lot of time and energy. If you're wondering what kind of items you should be bringing with you when you do this booth overhaul, you wanna be prepared. I do have a video that you can click on above that'll tell you everything that I bring with me and have in my bag to keep myself organized. You also might wanna make a list for your helper of things that they can do because sometimes the people with the vision are not always good at communicating what needs to be done and their head, if you're like me, is working four steps ahead. So I sometimes will have helpers, my mom or my daughter, and when they come, I will have them. One thing they're very good at is hanging items for me. I am no good at hanging anything straight. It takes me way too long to get that picture straight on the wall. They're also really good at packing up smalls on pieces that I need to move. Make sure to bring lots of extra containers for your booth overhaul, even if you're not planning on taking too much home, just so you can put stuff in and move things quickly. So if you're moving a whole bookcase and you're gonna keep the contents pretty much the same, you still need to take everything out to move it or you'll break stuff. Trust me, I've learned. Let's review the tips for planning your booth display. Number one, analyze your space. Take tons of pictures so you remember what you have. Step two, get your notepad ready. It's time to list all your big pieces. We're not talking the little small items, only the big ones, make a list. Step three, now it's time to sort those by color. Step four, in order to have a beautiful design, you need to be inspired. Check out Pinterest or an antique mall near you to get great ideas. Number five, add the symbols to your list. You're sorting your pieces by size and how easy they are to stack. Step six is to create the design. You want to use your notepad and rough it out. Draw out a rough sketch of how you're going to organize everything to save you a ton of time when you get to your booth. 
It's also helpful if you number the order in which you want to move your larger pieces to make it easier. Also, don't forget to use the margins of your design for important notes of what to bring, what repairs need to be done, and what items need to be brought home. Once you've planned it all out, now it's time to get to your booth and get designing. The more organized you are, the more fun it will be and the quicker it'll get done. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. I hope it has kind of helped you think about how to do your big redesign. I also hope it saves you time and energy to have a plan in place. I think it's really important and all the little extra work ahead of time will save you so much time and make you so much more profit in the end. Now, let's get out there to salvage, repurpose, and create.